Welcome everyone to another performance clinic. Today's topic is advanced business dashboarding and analytics with Dynatrace. February 2019, there's so much change happening in Dynatrace, we decided to add uh, the, the time to it, right? Because if you're watching this later on, you may uh, see new things in the product. Uh, so that's why the, the time is important. Today speaking, well, my guest speaker is John. How are you doing? Awesome. Thank awesome. you, everyone, for attending. Yeah, uh, maybe you want to tell a little bit about yourself. What do you do with Dynatrace? How long have you been here? Yes, yeah, sure. I'm John Kelly. I've been with Dynatrace for about five and a half years. Um, sales engineer, uh, live in Michigan currently, but support uh, pretty much Texas, Dallas, uh, Austin area uh, in a pre sales focus. Cool. And you are the wizard of the dashboards. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the session will be recorded. If you have any questions, uh, audience, you know, go into the question feature. And I will moderate. But having that said, uh, John, take it away. You know, tell us more about dashboarding. What people can do. What people may know about it. What they don't know, and what they should know about it. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you, Andy Grabner. Uh, let's let's get started here. Um, let me go ahead and. Uh, slide here. So what I'm going to do is actually talk about uh, dashboards, but I'm going to kind of do it in a theme of a Christmas carol. So this may be a movie. This is Disney's Jim Carrey version. You may have seen other versions or heard about it. And so I'm going to kind of take you through uh, the dashboarding past, present, and future, right? And so since we have, um, and I have limited Photoshop skills, but I think <laughs> I have a little bit better dashboard skills. And so this is actually going to be a dashboard carol. And I guess, Andy, uh, you're going to be Ebenezer Grabner. So I'm going to take you through each of the different phases of past, present, and future of dashboards. So I hope you enjoy. So let's hit into it. All right, so if we look at the state of dashboard present, so uh, Andy, I'll take you into the, the past. And this is actually, you know, type of dashboards in the past that we typically created, right? And they're mainly about just putting a bunch of metrics onto a single pane of glass, okay? And this happens to be one, you can see the cute little logo up in the upper right-hand corner from one of our competitors, all right? But this is a dashboard that really doesn't tell me uh, how is my business performing, right? Are we losing money? Are, we, is, is, are my users not converting? I can see things here over on the left where we have a CPU spike, but I have no business context, right? And the more and more I kind of steer at these dashboards of the past, that particular logo kind of turns into this little crazy dog logo. So these are type of dashboards that we don't want to create, right? And so what we want to do and, and focus in on, on some like tips and best practices and, and really kind of sort of bring some a uh, little clarity in and around how you would make these type of dashboards and so forth. The first thing, you know, big believer of, really having your da dashboards being very uh, symmetrical, right? So a clear, uh, clean grouping of all the content and space. Uh, people read things from left to right, top down. So when you create your dashboards, your most important tile should always be in that upper left. And usually what I see a lot within dashboards is that's where people typically put their company logo or different things. So, you know, kind of think about that clear, uh, clean grouping of that content and the most important I tend to keep to the upper left as you go through. Uh, glanceability, right? As you saw in the previous dashboard, it wasn't so bad because you know, they broke it down into you know clear groups. So they looked at CPU, disk, memory, and so forth, and network, right? But there was a lot of content. And if I added up, there was probably close to 30 different tiles or elements that were on that dashboard. And it made it kind of tough to really you know look at it cleanly and quickly and know do I have a problem I should focus on or, or where should I show focus CPU memory? So, um, you know, it can become sometimes we overload content. And I've seen times where, you know, people have put, you know, 60, 70 different tiles into a dashboard and it's just too much to take a quick glance at to know, you know, should I do something or should I focus on it? And that feeds into the next one, which is about simplicity, right? And really kind of keep it simple and, and tell a clean story about your business. The key word in here is about business, right? So the dashboards that we really want to create and the reason why, you know, kind of Andy and I had the conversation up front about, 
you know, hey, Donna Trace, we don't need dashboards. You may have heard things like that. It's not about that. It's about really focusing in on uh, having your dashboards tell a business story, right? So I can look quickly and know that I have a problem with my business. I need to do something to fix it, right? You know, pretty obvious consistency, right? So limit the color and the size of the fonts, you know, so it just makes it easier on the eyes, right? And I'm wearing glasses, right? So just, you know, have it so that the average person can, you know, consume the data cleanly and not overdo things like color and so forth, right? And then the last one here, which is what the dashboards of the past really had a big issue with, is really with designability, right? You don't want to create a dashboard that Davis will self-heal for you. Right, so there's no point in monitoring uh, CPU where if Davis detects a CPU saturation problem with things like Ansible Tower, Lambda functions, you could uh, auto or self heal that, right? So what's the point of having the dashboard to look at it when it's already being corrected behind the scenes? All right, so you don't wanna get into those areas. So now, Andy, I'm gonna take you now into the state of dashboard present, right? And this is where, you know, I'm gonna go more live into my particular tenant. And these are some of the different uh, key topics that I'll, I'll cover. And the first area is I'm gonna go through some of the things you need to do uh, behind the scenes before you really start creating your dashboards, right? You wanna get your naming rules in place, your key user actions defined, conversions. Uh, there's things like session properties, which is coming out here in March. So tomorrow's March, so sometime within the next you know, week or two, you should be able to have access to session properties. That gives me the ability to pull data out of my web application, right? So things like revenue, uh, member status, things that you see within the actual, uh, your client, you know, we can tie a session property to, bring that in, and then we could uh, marry that with some of the performance data and create dashboards around there. We also have something called USQL, which is coming in April, I just heard from the PM today that the early adopter is should be starting either today, tomorrow, or probably by Monday at the latest. So there'll be a blog post that'll be sent out with instructions on how to register if you want to get a USQL and an EAP. The reason I mentioned both the session properties and USQL is that a number of my dashboards use these particular features. So if you want to go ahead and, and implement them today, then you want to make sure that you're either on a, a USQL EAP or you know, patiently wait until April when it's GA, then those dashboards should be able to work fine within your environment. We'll also cover uh, cloning, painting and sharing. These are really important concepts as you start to create and, and publish out your dashboards. And, and with, especially with the cloning and painting, it makes it so much quicker and easier to uh, create that content. All right, now I have this thing called here, the, the Twitter Smackdown Challenge. So what is that? So. I talk a lot of smack on Twitter. It's probably one of my faults here, but I threw out and I just uh, replied to one of Andy's uh, Twitter uh, feeds where he is promoting this particular seminar. And uh, I replied back saying, hey, here's a dashboard. I'm gonna create this in three minutes or less. And he came back and said, I have a stopwatch and I'm gonna time you, right? So I'm gonna measure my performance. So the challenge is there, it's unaccepted. I'll see what I can do to get that in three minutes or less and maybe we'll create a world record here. Um, also talk about dashboard compare, right? The ability for you to you know, put different tiles and have one tile go off the actual uh, dashboard time frame. And another to do, there's some sort of relative time frame so I can have a side-by-side -side comparison. You know, very helpful um, when you start thinking about uh, A-B comparisons or even just looking at revenue this week versus last week. So we'll show how to create those. And then we'll hit into uh, the multi-dimensional dashboards, right? A lot of, you know, kind of feedback we get from the field is that, hey, I love those multi-dimensional dashboards, but I have to go into transaction services, pull up the service to be able to access that. I'll show you a quick, easy way to create those and then bring them quickly into your uh, dashboards. So you don't have to go hunting around and find those. Uh, we'll also talk about, which I think is one of the most important features, is the ability to import, export the dashboards. And all the dashboards I have, which are gonna show a good number of them, won't have time to show all of them. So we are limited to about an hour on this particular uh, perf clinic. Uh, but everything's posted up on GitHub. I'll show where it is. And, and it's also, the link is in this presentation that you can download and um, you can go ahead and pull those there in JSON format and import them in. And the reason I think this is very important is because dashboards are code. 
and they need to be treated like code, right? And so, you know, I'm going to go through an example where I'll accidentally delete one of my dashboards and show how I can go up to GitHub, pull it back down, and import it back in quickly. Uh, and then a couple of the dashboards I have uh, modified and uh, sized appropriately for mobile devices. Uh, we'll go ahead and show that off as well. So the current state, let's flip over to uh, demo time here. And I'm going to go right into my particular tenant, okay? And so one of the things I mentioned here before is, is kind of getting some of the basics out of the way. So my demo environment is easy travel, right? And uh, I'm running currently version uh, 165 in, in the uh, development environment. Yeah, just uh, to remind everyone, <clears throat> if you have any questions, please use the question feature and go to webinar. The first questions already came in, but I'll keep those for the end. Uh, but if you have questions, okay. just put them into the question feature. Excellent. So you probably heard, right? I know Andy's going to mention it at the end, so I don't want to steal all the thunder, but we have a, a developer license that's free for life, right? And so one of the things you could do, get their free license, download Easy Travel, and then you can just easily import everything uh, that, that I'm showing today and should work with uh, no configuration uh, pretty much at all. What you really want to do is come into your actual tenant itself, right? And let me go ahead and edit here. There's a couple of different things that whenever I launch into a new tenant here, one of the things that I do is the first off the bat is I create some naming rules. And I, and I do this because it makes the creation of dashboards so much easier and everything displays a lot cleaner, right? So I'm not looking to try and find my review action, which is called, you know, loading a page, orange dash booking dash review. I've, I've named it review, right? And so these are all the steps in my funnel from where I go to home, search, review, payment, finish. And so I, I kind of renamed each one of those, very simple uh, in terms of uh, being able to do that. And it, and it really shows well within the dashboards. The second thing you want to do is go through and create conversion goals, right? So a little bit here, which is a little, you know, kind of had a little change in mind when I typically think of a conversion goal. I think of a conversion goal as just finish, right? That's a user that came through home, they searched, they reviewed payment, and they had finished, and they, they booked travel, right? Finish, you know, is like what I would think is a conversion goal, but what you really want to do, and it'll make sense when you get, start to see the dashboard, is create a conversion goal for each step, okay? So for my each step here, I pull up, and since I've already renamed my user action, it makes it nice and clean, so I can start to put each one of those in place, okay? Third thing, again, this is something that's going to be available here very, very shortly, is to start to create some session properties. So there's certain elements within your application that you want to pull into Dynatrace, right? One of which is I created something called member status. So when my users log in, they're either going to be a platinum, gold, silver, bronze, or whatever you know, member status we have. I want to capture that because I want to use that later in some of my dashboards where I want to look at, say, revenue by member status, right? I want to make sure that my top members are generating the most revenue, right? And so that's an important uh, uh, system property that I want to pull in. And then I do a little regex cleanup where it shows up on the UI as you know, platinum status with an exclamation point. So I simply are just you know stripping out the back end of that as well. I do the same here for revenue. Obviously, it's very important. So in your application, it might not be a revenue producing application, but it's doing something, right? That's that you want to pull that element out. So this is another uh, CSS selector. And within Chrome, I can just go ahead and when I'm running the application, inspect the property, copy the selector, paste it right back in here, and then do whatever cleanup rule I need to do on that value. So this actually comes out as a, a double, right? So it's a, it's a revenue number that I have here as well. One last point here, and I'll show this in a little bit more, is you also have the ability now to pull out server-side request attributes, right? And so even though I pulled out revenue here, I just did this to show here that you can do this. So I have a particular uh, request attribute that I created on my back end called Mo Money, right? And I'm actually uh, tying a session property called Money to it. So I could actually query in money or revenue, and it'll pretty much be the same. Uh, but it's just another way that if you can't pull it for whatever reason out of your UI, then you can go ahead and grab it on the server side and then bring it into a session property and then it's available within USQL uh, within the, the run data set. So, so very important to be able to do that as well. 
Um, before I go in and show a little bit on the server side, what I want to do is kind of go back here to my application. Because the last thing you want to do here, another very important step, is I want to create key user actions. And that just helps with some of the tiles that I can now start to uh, look at my key uh, user action response time, right? And, and I've defined each of my steps of the funnel as key user actions, right? If you're not familiar how to do that, I'll just take a look at maybe one of these particular uh, actions below here that's not a key user action here. And whenever I drill into it, there's a item here, a little box that says mark as a key user action. Just go ahead and click it. So once you set up really the naming rules, conversion, session properties, um, as well as my key user actions, you're pretty good to go, right? And then as we know on the server side where you know, I, I had that no money, right? If I look at my booking service, this is where I, I define that. So you know, I can go in and take a look at that a little bit more. And I've, I've created some uh, multi-dimensional analysis views on that. I'll show them in a little bit. But if I go here into settings and I go server side monitoring, I go into uh, request attributes, right? So this is where I, I define this particular attribute. So I'm pulling it out of this particular method, get booking total, and it's the return value. That's, that has the revenue that was just booked for travel. And then again, as I did, is I then once I created this as a Java parameter, a Java method parameter, then I'm tying it to a session property on, on the user side, right? So uh, anything that's on the server side, yeah, again, you can define this particular uh, request attribute and bring into play, right? So, that's and John, kind of John just to, yep. uh, to put something in here, uh, I think I had a performance clinic in the past that talks a little bit about request attributes, but I think we should do another one and have been asked for doing a more deep dive on all the options here. So this is going to come because request attributes, as you said, are extremely powerful because through configuration here, you can say what type of information do you want to capture from the back end. And now you can also propagate it up to your end users so you can leverage this data I think that's extremely powerful. And also what's very cool, the uh, we, we really believe in configuration as code or configuration through APIs. Uh, you already mentioned that uh, we can import and export dashboards already through the API. Uh, request attributes can also be fully automatically defined through an API call. Uh, and there's many more things that you just walk through that can also be fully automated um, because this enables you to onboard new applications or services, including the configuration in a fully automated way. Yes, correct. Awesome. Okay, so let's start digging into these dashboards, right? That's why we're all here. So uh, one area that I really like to have is something where I call my, my launch pad. Right, and so you might think, well, why do you have a launch pad when I can access all your dashboards here? Well, let's take a look at my launch pad because I have basically, uh, I put in the uh, markdown tile and I just put a link to all my other dashboards, right? Now with this dashboard here, let me see if I can, uh, I have to move my screen here a little bit to get into uh, this area here. I put this actually into a, a, a share mode, right? So if I go down and manage the access, like who can access this dashboard, um, this is a new feature, heavily requested by a lot of our customers because they want to be able to give dashboards out to somebody without having to give them access to log into Dynatrace, or it's up in some sort of uh, common area, right? So I have my uh, a dashboard that's cycling through and so forth, and I don't want to have to log in every time. So we can have anonymous access to it, and so I created my launch pad, and now all I have to do is pass this URL off to somebody that I don't want to have to give them full access into Dynatrace, right? And then they actually have this particular launch pad here that they can now, without having to log into Dynatrace and have access to changing things and doing different things, they're just looking at these dashboards, and each one of these links are also anonymous, right? So let's take a look here at, um, I'm going to look at my book travel or funnel, okay? And so this is a dashboard here that um, now again, and, and I don't have to have access to it anonymous, right? Where now I'm looking at things in terms of just a pure funnel, right? And I kind of went a little bit uh, overboard in some of the emojis here. Uh, my kids think I'm 
uh, some sort of teenager uh, born again. But uh, anyhow, I usually put it up here because if I actually put home search review payment finished, the title becomes too long and it's really, I can't really size it yet. So at least just a good indication for each one of these different steps here. So in, the, in this funnel, we're looking at, you know, everyone that comes into the funnel. So I had 75 people hit the home page, all right? And right below that, I have the actual home page uh, duration broke out and then any errors, right? And so, yeah, there's a lot of errors that are happening that hopefully somebody can get busy and clean up, but won't focus on that right now. I'm just kind of mainly focusing on users that are moving through the funnel. And this is actually a USQL tile, okay? And so if I take a look and click here, I'm going to show you USQL, and I'm going to also break out and show you a little bit of ways of how you can access USQL, you know, a couple of different ways. One of which is to draw the USQL tile into your dashboard, and then you can put queries in place like this, right? But what I'm doing is I'm selecting account, and I'm going to call it request from my user session table where the user action name equals home. So just sum up every home hit I've had, and I have that here at, at 75, right? If I go back over here, then I can now start to grow and expand that out, right? So for the next one here, which I have home and search, right? I can drill in and look at that tile. And what I'm doing here is just adding, you know, now not only did they hit home, but they also hit search. So how many users moved off the home page and, and did search, right? And so now what you can do is that even if I go all the way through to the very end, right, that last step in the funnel is going to roll up all those steps. So this user that made it all the way through has to hit home, search, review, payment, and finish, right? And I've had 15 of those that, that walked all the way through. So by using USQL, right, I can get this nice view of users that are moving through a particular funnel. So out of 76 people that entered into the funnel, you know, 15 of them booked travel, right? And then I have the, you know, whatever visualization I'll show below. I just happen to be showing duration. You could actually change these tiles to visually complete. Uh, however, right, so you can size that pretty quickly. While we're talking about USQL here, if I come over here and click on user sessions, when this is enabled, you'll notice up in the upper right hand corner is a user session query box, all right? So this is another way I can access you know, USQL. I can come in here and I can start to do some freestyle uh, uh, writing of, of different uh, queries and be able to pull data out. What's really good about this is it has a wizard, so it really helps you. So it's very difficult to make mistakes. But if it does, it tells you very cleanly what the issue is. So I'm going to do a select, right? And then what I want to do here is I'm going to sum up. And I'm going to actually pull in my revenue amount, right? So now I pull it out here. And it already you know, pre-populated the, the from clause for me. So it already knows that it's going to pull out revenue from user session. And then I'm simply going to run this query, okay? Now I can make it a table format, single value, so I have different things. Depend upon what type of query you create, it's going to enable different visualizations. All right, so since I'm only returning back a single value, all right, this is done over the last two hours, this is how much revenue we have. Well, it shows that I don't like this name on the bottom. So I can change that. What I'm going to do is say as revenue. All right. So I can kind of, you know, again, create this on the fly. And then once I have this is fine, I can come over here and say, I want to pin this to a dashboard. All right. And I'm not going to mess with my current dashboard. What I'm going to do here is pin this to a dashboard. And um, actually, I just did to my dashboard here by mistake. But I'll go ahead and open that up. But now that particular revenue element is now shown up here within my dashboard itself, right? So, yeah, and, and then I could actually create more and I can do some over time ones and do bar charts, different things like that. But I have that particular element that's brought in here uh, via USQL. All right? So I'll go ahead and delete that and get my dashboard back to its current state. So that's, you know, again, one quick way with using USQL, right? I fetched out a session property um, and, and did some, you know, with my where clause, I'm able to now visualize something called a, a particular funnel. If I come back here, there's another version of this where uh, I have basically a workflow funnel that shows duration, okay? This is a dashboard that you can do today, right? It's, I'm not using any USQL or session properties. These are all out of the box tiles, all right? And this is actually the dashboard that uh, I told Andy that I can actually create this three minutes or less, right? So this is the, the, the Twitter SmackDown challenge that's going on right now. 
And so I'm going to create this. We're just going to show this is actually showing, you know, all the visually complete and so forth here. I'm going to do basically the same one here. But if Andy, if you have your stopwatch out, what I'm going to do is cover a couple of the other terms here of showing you how to clone, how to pin, and just, you know, kind of size things around. Um, and hopefully I can do it and break the record of three minutes. So you got your stopwatch? You tell me when to I, go. I, give me one second. Just want to reset my counter here. All right. One, All right, go. two, go. All right, so I'm going to clone this dashboard here, right? First thing here is I want to call it, this is my book, travel. Yeah, I, I type slow, so it's going to, um, uh, this is actually a workflow. Um, dash, we'll say visually complete. And since I love me some emojis here, I'm going to put an emoji up here. I'm going to use this guy here. And I'm going to pull out all the fancy toys here. And then the top header here is just going to be my workflow uh, step. Dash, visually complete. Um, actually, complete here. And then the next one here is going to be a header that I'm going to say workflow over time dash visual complete. All right, cool. We're doing good on time so forth. Hopefully. Just say one in minute. A one chart. minute is done. Oh, boy. We got to start moving fast here, right? The challenge has been thrown out there. So I'm going to do key performance actions. You notice that, hey, um, this is actually helping me out a lot because I've already defined those. I'm going to do average, and I'm going to save this to my dashboard. So that one's complete, um, and I'll go into this in a little bit later, but now what I'm going to do is resize this, okay, and bring it down here. We'll just leave it there and say done. Now i got to actually go up and do my upper tiles here. So I'm going to do home, okay. I'm going to pin this to dashboard. I'm going to pin it into my dashboard. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to say done here. I'm going to repeat, right? Now I want to go after uh, my search. I'm going to go search. I want to pin search to my dashboard here. I'm going to open it up, and I'll say done, right? And now I'm going to go after review, and I'm going to go pin. So this makes it so much easier where I don't have to mess around with stuff and configure tiles. So I just kind of let it do it for me automatically, right? And I got two more to go here, so I'm going to go ahead and get my payment. In the dashboard, uh, see, I'm, I'm just loading slow, so it's killing me. But you got 45 seconds. Give it to three go. minutes. <laughs> and then my very last one here is uh, finish, right? So I'm gonna go finish. I'm gonna pin the dashboard. See, come on, we're running slow. Pin, open dashboard. It moves it out here. I know what it does. It's trying to optimize the size. And I'm gonna say done. And so stop your clutch right here. Um, actually, you know what, here, let's just resize this a little bit better, you know, for some extra credit here, and uh, we're done, right? So there's the dashboard created, and did I do it under three minutes? Yes, you did it in 2.45. Woohoo! Woo New world record. Yeah. You guys are all witnesses. <laughs> so awesome. when Guinness World Records calls, you guys are all witnesses to it. So, again, some of the concepts here, they were pretty quick, right? I I kind of really had a design in mind as to what I wanted to do with this dashboard, okay? And I knew that if I got this first tile created, you know, once this took a little bit long time because I'm a very slow typer, but I got my headings in place here. I have a template, right? So it's always good to create all these different templates, right? And have them so you can quickly clone and then drop down your, your particular dashboard you need. And then I knew since this is, you know, the vision complete is what I dialed up here that if I clicked here and went in, if I launched into any one of these, it's going to give me the individual breakdown of that tile, and I just pin it to the dashboard as opposed to having to drag something on the dashboard, configure it, and go through, which takes a lot of time. Now, you this one little gotcha here is that you may have multiple uh, funnels or multiple uh, you know different things in your environment, so you have, may have more than you know these actions that show up here, right? And you only want to have these ones. So you can go down here and filter this. So I can say, hey, I'm only, and you might have a dozen of these, but I'm only interested in home, right? And I can actually just keep filtering here for all my different um, uh, key user actions that I want to display within my graph here. So again, you know, mine was simple because these are the only key user actions that I had. 
So if you have more and you want to weed out all the other ones, then use the filtering, right? And then save those changes to the dashboard. And now moving forward, if somebody decides to add another key user action for a different funnel, it's not going to mess up this graph, right? So that's kind of one little thing you can do if you need to uh, as you move forward. So great. So now that I have this dashboard, okay, one of the things here I want to do is I want to go ahead and share it, right? So I showed a little bit with the launch pad. So now I'm going to go ahead and click here and I'm going to say manage access. And then I'll say anyone can do it. And I'm going to copy that, right? And so I can put this into, how do I put it in the chat window? But yeah, I can put this into the chat window later if anyone wants to take a look at it. Uh, but in, in this, your case here, if you've done the same thing, then you could just publish this out and now anybody can access that dashboard you created. Don't have to log into Dynatrace to do that. So, so pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so while we're moving forward here, what I want to do is um, go ahead and show you a couple other dashboards, right? So I have something here that shows me the uh, my revenue analysis, okay? And so this is actually um, a really good dashboard. One of our customers uh, wanted to see uh, revenue and then lost revenue. And by being able to do a couple little manipulations, we said, well, we can also do something called risk revenue, right? And so now I visualize it within just a single tile here to show that, hey, over the last, you know, 24 hours or whatever my time frame is here, right? So 24 hours, we've generated just under, you know, half million dollars of revenue, okay? Of that, you know, how much was at risk? And when I say at risk, that means, and let's take a look at this tile here. So if I go ahead and click on it, I'm taking the revenue and I'm calling it risk revenue. But I'm saying, that, hey, where any user action has hit finished, right? So they went through the funnel but their AppDex category is not satisfied, right? And don't ask me why I didn't just say not um, satisfied, but I'm just saying, hey, if they're tolerating or frustrated or unknown, then that's revenue that's at risk. Because somebody worked through the funnel and they had a poor user experience. And so how much revenue was available or out there that they, they consume because that potential could be at risk where next time they may not complete the funnel, right? Um, and then, you know, in revenue is pretty obvious, right? So we just sum up all the revenue of people that finished. And then the lost revenue here is just that, hey, how many people all went all the way through, but they never hit finished? And what was in their cart, right? And so how much has been lost, right? And I put a little, the old uh, Jordan crying uh, uh, emoji there as well to kind of indicate that that's a, a sad event. But now we can actually start to see, you know, things very cleanly, all right? So Dynatrace, again, it's not just performance management, it's, software intelligence, right? So I'm now starting to pull all this, you know, revenue information over time. And what gets really important is where I start to split it, right? Because now I can take the same concept for either revenue, risk revenue, or lost revenue and say, how much of that revenue is lost by member status or by app decks, right? And to show you how we plot the revenue over time, it's pretty simple, right? So what I'm doing here is now I'm creating a bar chart and I'm doing basically, I'm taking the start time. So each time over my interval, so over the last 24 hours, right? I'm gonna call that my time and I'm gonna break it into 10 minute intervals, right? I'm gonna sum up the revenue for that 10 minute interval, call it revenue. And this is where a user action has hit finished and they have something in their basket, right? And then that creates this chart. And so one of the things when you start to look here, then you just simply cut and paste this particular query and you can put it into you know, my risk revenue, because I'm going to use that same exact query in my risk revenue over time, but I'm just going to say where they weren't satisfied, all right? And then now I can break it out and plot it over time to start to, to really kind of spot some trends, right? So creating these, again, they're uh, obviously using USQL session properties and so forth, you know, you know, pretty powerful, right? But now if I go back to my dashboards here, what really comes interesting is that if I start to do something where I'm looking at revenue by app decks, okay? Same look and feel, right? So I have a template that kind of has these, you know, uh, individual single value tiles and over time tiles. And so now I just, you know, pull that particular template up and then just go in and just modify the queries, right? So my satisfied revenue is very similar to the previous one. So I'm just gonna say, hey, were the users satisfied, right? and so forth, right? So it's very simple. And then just for the frustrated, do the same kind of query, but you know, where the user's frustrated. So why is this important, right? So if we go back to this dashboard, I wanna be able to quickly look, right? So from a glanceability point of view, I wanna know that, hey, our, our um, 
do we have a, a high number of users that are generating revenue and their user experience is frustrated, right? So do we have a frustration problem with our application? This is telling me the answer is no, right? Because I've only, in, in the last 24 hours, I've only uh, generated about $31,000 in revenue for users that were frustrated at book travel, okay? So I don't have a frustrated application issue that I need to address, right? And I can do the same thing here too, where I wanna look at my dashboards, very similar now, but let's look at lost revenue you know, by AppDex, okay? And here I can now start to see that, you know, are people bailing out because they're frustrated, right? And no, I mean, I, I have by far more people that are completely satisfied, work through the funnel, and they didn't actually book travel, right? Only 25,000, just under 26,000 were frustrated that didn't book travel, right? So this kind of gives me that software intelligence view of we don't have a, a problem with our website of frustrated users impacting revenue, right? Which is to look at a couple of these different dashboards I was able to clearly see that, right? And if I go back here to show you kind of one more where you know, I can split that you know, revenue analysis by member status, right? So the users that log in, I have my platinum, gold, and silver, right? I wanna make sure that, hey, you know, we, we really targeted a lot of marketing to our platinum users. Is it paying off? Right, so do we see more revenue produced by those users versus ones that are gold or silver? All right, so I can now start to see that as well as being you know plotted over time as well. So again, you know, a number of those dashboards I think that are really powerful, important to be able to look at. Now, if you look at a couple of the other ones here, I want to show something where I have some dashboards and I look at, uh, for example, uh, let's look at one of my uh, KPI dashboards. So I can do a quick search if I can't really find it quickly. But here's the funnel KPI comparison dashboard, all right? And so let's go ahead and launch into that. This is another dashboard that you can implement today, right? Because this is all uh, doing uh, custom charts right out of the box. And what I'm doing now here is you notice that there's a time filter on these bottom tiles, right? So these top tiles are going off the last two hours, or if I change this, say the last six hours, right? What I want to do is quickly look here to see, do I have some sort of an issue, right? So I want to look for outliers. And when I look here at outliers, I see basically quickly my home page from a funnel step, right? This is probably not so important, but from visually complete duration, network and server, it is, you know, the number one, uh, right? And it's also, this is kind of inverted, so it also has the poorest AppDex rating. So if I want to try and optimize my funnel, I'm really going to try and maybe focus on home because it seems to be an outlier over anyone else. Maybe finish as well too, because visually complete at two and a half seconds might be longer. So if I really focus on those two steps, then I can start to see if uh, you know we can generate more revenue, have more satisfied users flowing through the application. And I'm comparing that to the previous time frame. So this is the last six hours, this is the previous six hours. So if we take a look at one of these particular tiles here, right? This is actually um, a, a custom tile, and I did a top list. I prefer top lists, you know, when I'm looking at here, for example, my user action count. Some people prefer pie charts, but usually with pie charts, it's a little hard for me to line up sometimes the colors, right? I like the top list because the actual element shows up right inside the bar. So from a glanceability, I much prefer top list over anything else, right? It's easier to quickly take a look at and not have to look at a pie chart, look at the legend and, and make that analysis. Now look at these particular tiles here that are in, in a time compare mode. Let's go ahead and edit this tile, okay? Because now, which is new here under the configuration side is what we call our time filters, right? And so for this tile, I'm not gonna use the global time frame, which is six hours. I'm gonna use a comparison time frame, which is telling me it's gonna use the previous six hours. And so each one of those tiles, I did that, and that's why we have the little uh, filter that's up here as well. And if you mouse over, it tells you, you know, what that filter is. So it's looking at yesterday from 2240 to 440, and then it's looking from 440 to, you know, 1040, right? So very easy to be able to uh, do that. You can put any tile in there. Currently, there's uh, a slight issue with uh, USQL, put them in comparison mode, uh, but I, there's an open issue with that they're currently working on. So if you do have EAP with USQL, and put them in comparison mode. Hopefully that's something addressed pretty quickly, right? But you know, again, something that uh, is very powerful because not only with just the, the user data here, 
yeah, I can, you know, put really anything in comparison mode, which uh, is very, very helpful. All right. So let's click done here. Now, one other thing here, right? I want to show this because I think this is probably my uh, most important dashboard, right? And I had this actually while I was adjusting the clock in my bathroom. I slipped and fell and banged my head, and the vision of this dashboard came to me. Okay, sorry, that's actually a reference to uh, Back to the Future where Doc Brown discovered uh, the flux capacitor. But I think this is like my flux capacitor dashboard. It's kind of funny because I did wake up this morning and realized that, hey, Andy's been promoting out that, hey, John's going to show this revenue, lost revenue, and funnel weakness. I thought, oh, you know, I can look at some of the funnel dashboards, but I don't have anything that's really funnel weakness. And so I started kind of kicking around this morning. So Andy, you got to pay attention here because this is a new dashboard for you. You haven't seen this one yet. But this is actually a really cool dashboard, right? Because this is actually telling me a lot, and I'm going to put it more into full screen mode here. Let's get rid of the slide bar so we can focus on this one here. Because this is really truly telling me where I have weaknesses in my funnel, right? So when I looked at the funnel, it's I got a home page, right? We're going to do a search, review, payment, and finish. Well, finish is the last step, right? Um, and I'm looking for people that banded out. So that's I'm not even interested in that because that doesn't make sense from an abandoned point of view. And home. You, know, you can have people just hitting the site that by mistake and so they bounced out. So I'm not really concerned about home. I'm really concerned about when they're active in the funnel, right? And what I'm doing here is I'm getting an exit count. So where are they exiting within the funnel, which is important because the previous screens, I looked at abandoned counts and things like that. Not all abandons are equal. The further you are in the funnel, I think it's far more critical if you're exiting that funnel, right? And so here with my exit account, I can say that, hey, we had roughly, you know, about 23 people exited the funnel at the search screen, right? And this is over the last hour. And and the review screen, I had maybe around 15 and probably about seven from the payment. So, you know, again, and it waits more because, hey, seven at the payment, they're one step away from actually booking travel. And that might be a higher number, more so than a lot of people that are just doing a bunch of searches and just leaving because they're price shopping, Right. So I can very quickly see, you know, this is telling me that, you know, I have a high number or exiting at a certain point that I really don't want them to. And then what I do below here, is this, I show right below there is how much revenue is exiting with them, right? So when people are searching, you know, how much revenue that they searched on that they didn't go through the funnel and they left, right? Or how many people actually took it the next step, reviewed, then left, or actually entered the payment, but didn't hit finish, right? And so now I can know how much money is at stake for a particular step in my funnel, right? So that's showing me potentially I have a weakness in a certain area here as well. Now, the other thing here as I look at is I have, you know, visually complete, right? And so I can look here to say at that exit point, you know, what was their user experience, right? And I'm looking at it for duration, server, and network. So these are my performance KPIs, right? I can now start to see that, hey, here from a visually complete from a network as well as duration this review step is a little bit heavy right we may want to try and tune this down so that the users aren't experiencing poor visual complete or heavy network time which is a way we can minimize that then maybe we can start to see that our x account drops as well as the revenue that's being lost drops as well too so i think this is probably a really cool dashboard that you know again i just came this morning and, and put it together and, and did so forth. Let's take a look at maybe some of the queries here real quick, if you want. Um, if I take a look yeah. here, I'm doing a couple of things here where I'm, I'm, I'm you know, kind of minimizing those user actions I'm looking for. And I'm saying, hey, is action truth? That means they, they left. This is their exit page, right? And they're matching conversion goal with not finished. So I don't want to get those people that finished. And that's simple, right? And then I can now start to do the count. As the same for visually complete revenue and so forth, right? So very quick and easy to put it in there. So um, you got a question, Andy? I, I think you're uh, yeah. Well, here. I have. F first of all, I have a comment. I think you have to hit your head more often because if you come up with these amazing things by hitting your head, you know, you should, you should maybe force yourself <laughs> to do that. No, there's a lot of Andy, questions. I think, yeah. I don't know if you want to risk brain damage any more than I have, yeah. but. <laughs> okay, but yeah, so if you want to do the um, maybe some questions, there's just a few little yeah. things I want to show, which is the uh, export import, right? Um, yeah, and I think that's important, but yeah, definitely uh, a good point now to uh, hit into some questions.
yeah uh and also consider we only have 15 minutes left um so you know a couple of questions came up when are these features available are they already available some people are on dynatrace managed and maybe behind a couple of versions because they don't do the continuous update so a lot of these features especially the new tiles uh they have been introduced uh i think around the last two or three sprints um, so I had one yeah. uh, one person on here. They were still on an older version of Managed and haven't updated. That's the reason why you don't may not see all the same tiles. USQL. The question came in: When is USQL available again? I think you mentioned in the beginning the beta yeah, is going to start soon. Yeah, uh, the early adopter is going to start yeah, today, tomorrow, Monday by the latest. Uh, GA is targeted for April. Perfect. Cool. And then there was also a question about the USQL being available through the API. Yes, if you if you search what I just did, I just Googled Dynatrace uh, USQL, and then you'll find blog posts uh, and also links to the API. And this is all this is all there. So uh, you should check yeah, that that's, out. That's, that's, yeah, it's very important. I have um, and I'm going to go over the PowerPoint real quick at the end if I have time. But uh, using the API for USQL is something you do today. Right, and there's a, there's a good use case for that. I'll show in a little bit. Um, but if we want to take a quick pause here, what I want to show here, and this is all in the PowerPoint. So if you uh, uh, upload it once it's posted up, all the dashboards I have are all exported out to GitHub here, so you can pull things through. And to give you an idea of how that's used here, real quick, let's go back to my dashboards, and let's just say that, um, and this happens right a lot. Um, God, I'm always deleting things by mistake. But this abandoned analysis one, just say, for example, I accidentally delete it. Okay, it's gone, right? And so I can go over here, come back, um, it's abandoned analysis is out. So I have a, a REST API, right? And you can go through and access the REST API from the UI itself, right? And I can actually go through and I can pull, you know, and, and, and get anything. This is actually getting a database, uh, a dashboard out. So if I go back here to dashboards, and let's just go into, say, revenue analysis. You notice here every dashboard has a unique ID. If you pull this dashboard ID up here, right, and you want to create a token and, and give authorization here uh, to your a API, but then I could put in the, the actual ID of this particular dashboard here, and I can say execute. And what it's done here is that this is my revenue analysis dashboard, all in JSON. Right, and so I took this, saved everything up here onto GitHub. Okay, now I have the abandoned analysis one that I accidentally deleted. Let's take a look at that. Right, so Andy, if you have your stopwatch available again, right, we took what uh, just under two minutes and 45 seconds, whatever, to create a dashboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is now when I go through here, you can, if you want to start your stopwatch again, yeah, one, two, and go. Go. So I have this here. I'm going to go back into my REST API, okay? And I'm going to come over here to, I want to create a dashboard, okay? And I'm going to try this out, and I'm going to put my particular JSON file in here. All right, I'm going to say execute, all right? And it's done. So you stop your stopwatch, Andy, okay? So I got my air code or my response code 201 back. It did it really create it? Let's take a look. Let's go to dashboards, go over here to create and get back into my dashboard. And there it is, back again in its glory, right? So how long did that one take? 21 and a half seconds. 21 and a half seconds, right? So like I, so again, these, these dashboards are there with the export import feature, all right? It access it here. If you click on your little guy in the upper right hand corner, go to the configuration API. Okay, and then come down and it'll show dashboard, just select dashboards, um, and you're into that uh, API configuration. Uh, a lot of good things. Just make sure you authenticate, right? So go into your uh, settings, uh, integrations, uh, Dynatrace API, uh, make sure you have read write access, uh, and then uh, authenticate that particular um, feature, and then you can export import dashboards uh, through, uh, through JSON. And so what I'm gonna do, Andy, actually, is I'm going to actually, and this might be a little idea for a future perk clinic, is I'm going to automate this, right? So whenever I make changes in my dashboard, it's going to automatically post up to um, my GitHub. And I'm calling that, wait for it, the unbreakable dashboard pipeline. So I'm just spitballing here, but I think that, you know, hey, you know, maybe that's something Sounds we like. could definitely show. 
Sounds like so, a plan, yeah. <laughs> All right, here, one other thing here, I know we're probably in overtime, but um, one of the things here, I'm gonna kind of skip through this a little bit. One of the things I, I you looked at is the, we had a problem where I thought that, hey, do we have like this dashboard story where people like love the dashboards and they put them up and they don't really use them? And so this is a customer that I went in and kind of observed the behavior and we had the dashboards up and they really weren't using them. And the only time I used them is when they got um, basically a push notification to their phone that there was a problem. Okay. And I thought about like, you know, how can we go ahead and actually fix that and kind of spare in some of the details here. What I think, you know, to take us into the future and then hopefully have a few more in this left to ask, answer some more questions. It's really, it's a, the line between the dashboard and an internal web page will say, right. And I'm so confident about it. I signed it and dated it as to that's where the future dashboard's going. And how does that look? If you look here, everyone's seen the problem cards before, right, Andy? So this tells me that, you know, 6,000 data points were analyzed. I know two and three users were impacted and over 2,000 service calls, right? I can see that, hey, what is the impact on my application? I can see that, hey, Shady fixed it. Cool, way to go, Shady. I can see what the root cause is. I'm running Davis 2.0, right? So I have all these uh, metric anomalies detected. So Andy, what is this? a web page not telling me right well it doesn't tell yeah. me uh, yeah i think i don't see how much revenue is actually impacted by this right now exactly it doesn't tell me revenue and i don't know if these users that were impacted had trouble going through the funnel right so what we have now and this is available today this and this is also the the plugin for chrome is a, a guy alistair emsley who's an sc in the uk brilliant cat right he created this and it's actually utilizing the Davis API where it calls out to Dynatrace, pulls out my conversion funnel information and my revenue amount and posts that back into the web page. So this is basically I have a web page with the important elements of my dashboard all in one place. So my customer that wasn't really looking at my dashboards a lot, whenever they had a problem, they started to look at it, but they had to try and fumble and find it. This brings it all together. It, it blurs that line between a web page and a dashboard. And again, this is something that's uh, available. You'll have to wait. This is a session property, which is due, and like, like I mentioned here, within just a few weeks. So it's supposed to be out in March. But you could today download the Chrome plugin. I know Andy, you and Alistair did a uh, perf clinic on this, right? And use the uh, API callback, which is built into that uh, particular um, uh, plugin, and and now start to bring in your at least today all your conversions in here. And now I can clearly see that, hey, this authentication problem is, is killing my funnel, right? So I look at the same uh, number of, of, of funnel hits versus yesterday versus last week. And so from a percentage point, I'm really kind of, you know, dropping almost in half. And then my revenue is down as well, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of all I had, right? And so my, my final thought here is, again, just that last line here is the, the line between the dashboard and the internal web page will fade. So these old rusty dashboards, will no longer look like that. They'll look like this into the future, okay. right? So um, these are the links, right? As I mentioned mm -hmm. before, my GitHub, all the documentation. If you guys want to play around with the tenant, I got this gets you to my launchpad anonymously. You can click around. Um, I think one link is broken, but the rest of them work fine. Yeah, uh, feel free to do it. It's here as well. Uh, and I know Andy want to talk about the free trail and maybe answer a couple more questions here. Yeah, exactly. So first of all, I, I like the one comment. I have to read it out loud now. Amit is saying, I'm like a kid waiting for the new PlayStation. I can't wait. So a lot of great things <laughs> that, you, that you showed here. Um, yeah, the, the trial. So everyone obviously can get access to Dynatrace by signing up for the trial. Also remember that we announced the Developer Lifetime Program. This is accessible for Dynatrace customers and partners. So if you go to developers.dynatrace.com, everyone can sign up for their own Dynatrace developer instance for life. And you can then play around with a cool, a lot of cool things. And also thanks for forwarding. So we have Perform. Well, after Perform is before Perform. Perform Vegas is over, but Perform Barcelona is coming up in May. And there's also some regional events that are out there. So go to perform.dynatrace.com. Now we got a couple more minutes to go through questions. And uh, John, if you want, uh, at least I do it, I'll turn on my camera again. Um, yep. There's, there's a lot of questions uh, around, I think, USQL, and hopefully we answered all of them. 
Uh, USQL uh, is available through an API and has been already available through the API for a while. USQL in the web UI, as you showed it, John, um, is going to be uh, going beta in the next you know, week or two. Uh, they told you March, so it's going to be here soon. Uh, a lot of other questions came in around, uh, I don't see all the tiles that you had, and it turned out by me moderating the questions that most of these folks are currently on Dynatrace managed, meaning, and they also uh, maybe not be up to date with the latest updates. Um, so if you are on Dynatrace SaaS, you should have seen pretty much uh, most of it, except USQL, but all the other tiles, everything is there. And if you are managed, hopefully you can update soon and then you will get these things as well. Um, Next question, and that's something I couldn't answer. Kevin is asking, these anonymous dashboard links, uh, is there a way to either set a time limit or can we, for instance, revoke them um, at some point? Is this, is this an option? Yeah, so um, I know there's a way to, to um, regenerate it, right? So if I make this shareable, all right, and if I go ahead and, and, you know, this is now the link to it, uh, say, for example, uh, and you could probably, you could do this through the API uh, as mm -hmm. well to automate it through everywhere. But the easiest way to do is that, hey, after a while, then I'm just going to go ahead and actually renew this, right? And so mm -hmm. now it generates a difference. So if somebody left your company, they have these anonymous um, uh, URLs, just go mm -hmm. through uh, via the API or individually and just renew them all, and, and they're different. Okay, perfect, cool. Um, by the way, and you know, if you want to turn on your camera, here we go. Look at that, beautiful dashboards, mm -hmm. beautiful face. Here we go. Um, the let's see. The next question was interesting. So, you in your USQL earlier, you showed the uh, the revenue that is on 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 stake by using USQL to filter on let's say AppDex. Now, here's a question: Is it possible to use USQL? to figure out how many people, how many how many users encountered, for instance, a page not found, right? So like for, like hunting for, for yeah. broken links or certain certain events that happen along the way. Yeah, so if you have, um, uh, let me go back to full screen here. Yeah, it, it, that, that's a good one. I've actually, that's a, another use case I can actually go through and take a look at, All right? But what you'd have to do is, it depends on what that uh, page is gonna show, right? So what Dynatrace will, you know, if, if you're looking at something that's looking at a return code where it's a, a page not found, then I could uh, pull that out as some sort of a, a, a session attribute, put it as a session property, and then uh, and then start to report on that. All right, and I can do a count session by a number of times of counts of this page not found. All right, so yeah, I think yeah, definitely something we can do. I think it's a combination yeah. of uh, server side as well as what's on the user side. Yeah, exactly. And I think you can also just define a, uh, a rule, right? Uh, error detection rule. So we would detect an error not found page uh, like Correct. Uh, as an error. And then you can say filter on all the users that encountered this particular error. So that would also right. work. Uh, next question, and I'm going through the list now and I'll see how long people, I can do another couple of minutes. Um, do you know, are there any plans on adding some basic math operations either to dashboards or into USQL? Yes. yes. Yeah, perfect example, right? Because um, think about this, right? When I showed conversions, right? And if, everywhere even I pull a conversion tile, it's looking at the number of sessions that hit my application to this particular uh, conversion element, right? And you may have multiple funnels in there, so that's going to throw that off. So what you really want to do is do the math on your first entry point into the funnel, right? And that number of sessions, right? And, and do the math on the last. It's not here today, but what they have coming up, and I'm not sure the exact date on it, but it's called uh, uh, subscribe measures, right? So think of those as in the old app Mondays as BTs. So I can say, here, I have a measure, which is the count of home, and I have a measure of the count of finish, right? And I want to do a subscribe measure where I'm doing math against those two, right? And then that's going to save it into the, uh, the run data so you can query that within custom charting as well as USQL, okay? So when we have the uh, subscribe measures that's coming up, that, that'll be able to give any type of math manipulation uh, that you need to do. Uh, I just gave one example, but you can really do anything, you know, from that point mm -hmm. forward and, and, and create that as a uh, subscribe measure. Mm -hmm. And then maybe a follow-up question to the previous one with the 404 error. 
can we find the page before getting the 404? Uh, so you can obviously then look at all the different users uh, on the one side that um, at the user sessions, and you can figure out what was the path to that that led to this page not found error. Um, and if it is a 404 that actually comes back with like a nice description, then that means we would actually capture it as a user action, and then we would also have the referrer. So remember, every time you click through different pages, the way the HTTP protocol works, you always get the referrer header, and we also have that so we know immediately what the previous page uh, was to answer that question. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, and, you and you can, uh, yeah, for that question in particular, um, I kind of had something very similar when I was playing around with the um, the, the funnel weakness dashboard, right? Because when I was pulling information out of the, uh, the session table, right, the session table is going to have all those user actions, and I could cl click those sequentially so I can see their click path. And so then what I can do is query that session uh, table where I've had a 404, and then pull the whole click path out and then be able to display that in a table mode. And then you'll see that, you know, you went from home finish and hit select and got the 404. So, or, you know, whatever your steps were, right? So you can definitely do that. Um, uh, again, it's going to require USQL, which you, you know that the uh, the dates that that's going to be available. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely can do that within the session table. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, I'll take uh, uh, first of all, you know, if you don't get to all of your questions, you can also always go to answers.dinotrace.com. Um, there's one question that I want to write. I'm not sure if I fully understand it, but can alert monitoring be set per dashlet thresholds? as people do not always view dashboard as mentioned. So I think if, the, if I understand this correctly, you want Dynatrace to automatically alert to certain things in case they don't look at the dashboards and then see that as a problem. And I think, John, this is what you said in the beginning. We don't need these dashboards anymore uh, that we used to use to figure out is there, is there a problem out there because this is what Davis is doing for us now. Right, especially right. when it comes to, you know, response time, thresholds, breaches, and stuff. Like this is where the Dyna, where the Davis uh, AI comes in, right? So we, uh, Natasha, you may want to look at at all the um, the problem detection that we can do, like this here, right? Nobody needs to build dashboards anymore to uh, figure out that there's a response time problem that impacts people. When Dynatrace detects this issue, we can automatically create a Slack message. Uh, service now integration, email, whatever you want, right? So you can then notify the people or the tools there. Yeah. Right. And I think, too, it's, it's the same way that this plugin is working here, too, right? So whenever a problem card opens up, it's going on and querying this, and you could put some intelligence into uh, that particular plugin to say that if I have a, a threshold drop of more than 10%, okay, uh, so all of my conversions have suffered by 10%, then you could, uh, you know, fire off a, a, an alert or not like, so you can do it you know, within an, an existing web page by leveraging the API. Um, mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. So last question, um, is there a way to disable anonymous sharing of dashboards? Uh, I believe the question is if you have something shared anonymously and then you want to revoke it, I think what you just showed earlier, you can just flip the switch or you can also do it through the REST API. Right? Yeah, you can do it to the API, and then also I believe it's a uh, you can it's a, it's set off in a feature flag, Andy. So I believe that mm -hmm. uh, if you don't want to deal with that at all, and then okay. have somebody accidentally trip over it, the feature okay. flag goes fully disable it, and you won't have it. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then last pitch, because Tina is just asking, when is this business metric uh, tile going to be available? It is available uh, thanks to um, the Chrome plugin. Uh, that was built, right? The Chrome plugin is basically pulling, yeah. you, have the, you have the link somewhere here, Alistair's super cool Biz Impact Chrome plugin that you can download. It's a Chrome extension that is right. on the problem, just pulling data from Dynatrace right. you, using USQL. Cool. Yeah, and his link here has uh, instructions, right? So you do, you want to create a token. Um, you want to give it the, the proper access. Uh, and today, just uh, conversions, right? And then when session properties becomes GA, then you can actually add that in as well, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have conversions to find uh, this plugin, it's not searchable. So just you know, upload the uh, presentation and the links here will take you right to that plugin and, and you go from there. Yep, and that's to conclude, so because the questions also came in multiple times, the session is recorded. The video will be uploaded to university.dynatrace.com. And then if you go to Dynatrace and webinars, you will find this one and next to it, the slides as well. 
Now, the other thing, the video will also be uploaded to YouTube. So on the Dynatrace YouTube channel, there is a playlist called One Agent Tutorials. That's where you find all the videos as well. But slides are only available on Dynatrace University. John, you definitely deserve more than a big mug of coffee now. <laughs> this was pretty amazing. <laughs> am I on the camera? So yeah, you are. Of coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And for everyone, I hope I answered all the questions. Uh, also take a look, I answered all the questions in the chat itself. So take a look in case you haven't seen it. Everett, if you want to follow up with the question that uh, it seems I couldn't answer, feel free to send me an email. I sent you my email. John, I'm sure we'll have you back for another enlightening session, enchanting session uh, on dashboards uh, later in the year when there's no more features available. This is pretty cool stuff, and uh, I understand now that dashboards still have a place. They do, they do, um, yeah. absolutely. You know, hey, one yeah. thing, just in, in closing that, yeah, hey, dashboards do matter. Uh, you had Perform, the hot day, that was the number one session sold out, right? And I don't mm -hmm. think they're coming because of me, right? Everybody wants the dashboards, and even the breakouts were uh, jam-packed as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, everyone sees it free and clear, and and, and you know, just a quick uh, shout out to uh, uh, Thorsten, uh, Peter, Roman, all the guys in the UI. These guys are doing amazing things, right? Yeah, and um, you know, they're they're putting out these updates, you know, at at a laser speed. So uh, these guys are brilliant in what they do. So I just want to give them proper credit. Yep. All right. And with that, thanks for listening in, and uh, see you at the next performance clinic. Bye bye, everyone. See ya.